That's hundreds of phone calls about measles during our 5 o'clock newscast answered by our experts in the Connect Center. If you have questions, give them a call right now at 509-443-1111. KHQ Local News at 6 begins right now. The measles back again. Right now, we know many of you have lots of questions about this virus, which we haven't seen in more than two decades. So tonight, we're here to answer them for you. Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Stephanie Vigil. I'm Ben Kleckner. We have team coverage of the measles tonight, including some new details about the person currently infected. Gabe Cohen joins us live. Now, Gabe, you have looked into all of this today. Are there any places in Spokane that are at risk this evening? Well, Van and Steph, right now, the Spokane County Regional Health District says no, this virus only lasts in the air for about two hours, and the only woman who has shown symptoms is recovering at home this evening. But that patient, an employee actually at this South Hill Qdoba, was out and about enough when she was contagious that the health district fears some people could be at risk, may have come into contact with her, and they want to know if you may be one of those people. Spokane's first measles patient in 21 years is getting better. I'm still feeling pretty sick, but um, not ill enough to be hospitalized and, and improving. Now concern shifts to those she may have infected. Well, it turns out before receiving a measles diagnosis, this patient spent plenty of time in public. So here's the window of concern. It begins Sunday, April 12th, when that patient spent eight hours on South Grand Boulevard at this Cadoba Mexican Grill. Then on Monday, the patient spent five hours here up North Division at the North Park Racket and Athletic Club from 1 to 6 p.m. The patient didn't appear again in public for two days until they came to Franklin Park Urgent Care Center on Wednesday seeking treatment for early measles symptoms. And the last place of concern is the emergency department here at Providence Holy Family Hospital, where the patient spent 15 hours combined between Thursday and Friday night and all day Sunday. Exposure risk at those facilities is long past. But if you may have crossed paths with the patient, watch out for symptoms. And we did just get breaking news from the Spokane County Health District adding this subway location right next to the Qdoba where that patient works as a possible fifth contamination location. They want to know if you were here as well. And I mentioned Franklin Park Urgent Care. They weren't able to diagnose the patient when she first came in with some flu-like symptoms. They say it's because it didn't appear to be measles. They explained. I spoke with them earlier today. It's not in the differential typically because right now we've got a lot of influenza going around, a lot of strep throat, and so if, if patients present, you know, with a fever, a sore throat, a headache, you know, uh, typically we look at other things prior. And in this case, the patient had a pending travel. They didn't really fit the protocol. There's no rash, which typically is distinctive of, of measles, and so it wasn't something that you would think about initially. Again, the health district says these locations are all safe at this time. What they want you to focus on are those uh, are those time frames that they gave if you were at those locations. They want you to watch for symptoms and, of course, make sure you are up to date on your immunizations. Reporting live on the South Hill, Gabe Cohen, KHQ Local News. All right, Gabe, thank you. We've been getting a lot of calls about measles all day, and we've been leading people to the experts, but there have been so many questions we decided to bring the experts to you. In our health center tonight, the Connect Center, we're answering your questions about measles and Caitlin Reardon is in the Connect Center with more tonight. Caitlin? All right, Steph, that's right. We're back here in the Connect Center with experts from Spokane Regional Health District. This is Susan Joberg and she is an epidemiology program manager there. They've been taking calls for just about the last hour with people having questions about measles and one of the things that Gabe touched on but we did discover there's another location that people need to be aware about. Correct. Go ahead. We've added Subway which is right next door to Qdoba on South Grand. They share a hallway and a bathroom with Qdoba and so we've added that for the time frame of um, I believe it's April 12th between 3 and 10 p.m. Okay and what are uh, what's the main question you guys have been getting? If I've had the measles can I get it again and no you cannot and probably the second most common question is if I um, have been fully vaccinated can I still get the measles or do I need a booster and the answer to that is also no. So you don't need a booster if you've been fully vaccinated? 
Shannon. Correct. Okay. All right. Of course, they'll be here taking calls for the next, uh, what, about 25 minutes. So you go ahead and get your calls and a few questions. That number is 509-443-1111. Dan and Steph.